But then I thought, you know, who could be next? Who could be just as deserving? And then my first thought was one of the greatest tag teams of all times. The Rougeau brothers, Jacques Rougeau brother and his brother Raymond Rougeau. Those two guys need to be in the Hall of Fame. And wish you all your great luck at Jacques Rougeau's Wrestling Academy, the greatest wrestling academy ever known. It's Chris Jericho here just wishing everybody at Jacques Rougeau's Wrestling Academy in the 2023 class the best of luck. Alexandre Gilles, Vincent Terre, Junior Boursier, Duban, Atomic Train, et voici Lutte Académie 2023, notre chanson, Les Grands, Les Grands! And we're back in the room once more, ladies and gentlemen. Have I got a treat for you? I always do. I am the Cayman. This is the Cayman Show. And joining me today, as said before, he is handsome. He is brave. He is strong. A man that needs no introduction, but we're going to give him one anyway. Returning to the Cayman Show, I give you the one, the only, Jacques Rougeau. Welcome, my friend. How the devil are you? Hey, Cayman, how are you? It's so nice to be speaking with you again. It always, uh, what a great time we had last time. And uh, Fantastic. so many things have happened since we've spoken. So I'm really looking forward to this podcast. Absolutely, my friend. Absolutely. Yeah, you're a really busy guy, <laughs> to say the least. Well, you know, I try to stay alive. That's the, the, the moral of the story. And, uh, and that's the secret. And, 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 and yes, I was very lucky in the last few years to be involved in a lot of things and, uh, and good things, things that are fun in life and uh, my passion, living my passion with Wrestling Academy. So that's so life is good. Fantastic. I'm glad to hear it, my friend. I'm glad to hear it. Um, hashtag brilliant. If you remember, you remember. Brilliant. Right? brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> good man. All right. Well, you brought it up straight away. So straight off the bat, let's talk a little bit about the Wrestling Academy, Jacques Rougeau's Wrestling Academy. Uh, let's talk about that. What a busy time how that baby has grown since we last spoke. Fill us in. Um, amazing, Cayman. Uh, so you remember last year that we uh, we had this competition. We had competitors from all over Canada that we had asked them to send videos, a 30-second yeah. video. There's like 15 seconds to hear them talk, and then 15 seconds to see them in the ring, their best moves and stuff like that. And we took all the inscriptions. And last year... There was 21 inscriptions from the province of Quebec. And just for to inform the people that are not aware that Canada, the country of Canada, has 10 provinces. So, so out of the province of Quebec, we had 21 inscriptions. And, and out of the all, the all the nine other provinces, we only had 19 inscriptions. It was wow, like people, people, people didn't believe in the project in Canada. You know, it was the first year. And, uh, and, uh, and, and, but it's amazing because, you know, last year we went along with the project. We had our four winners of $5,000 each. And the four winners went to the Nightmare Factory Fantastic. for three months. They were trained by uh, Billy Gunn, QT Marshall, and Cody Rhodes, who just was the main event at WrestleMania. Yeah, wow. That's a, that's a big deal now, man, you know? Yeah, it is because, you know, it's trained by him five days a week for three months, you know, and uh, and uh, so that was a big prize. And then plus I had a guy, Zashman in Australia, who, uh, who was a toy company and made some wrestling figurines of our winners. And then uh, the four winners. And then we had a QT Marshall who gave a little uh, candy at the end where the four winners also went to the debut of AEW in Canada, their first show they ever had. My four winners were on that show, which was Jeremy Prophet and uh, Jessica Black. They were from Quebec, two winners from Quebec. And yeah. Chris Dillon was from Ontario. And, and I mean, Chris uh, Dillon was from the Maritimes. And, and Matt Black, he was from Ontario. So long story said is we've built a lot of credibility since last year because everybody across Canada, everybody around the world, because I've done so many podcasts around the world, they all saw that, hey, Jacques Rougeau was saying the truth. You know, he's mm -hmm. telling the truth. So what happened this year is we uh, we had the inscriptions for himself has sent out to everybody. And, and contrary to last year, where we had, like I said, 21 in Quebec and 19 in Canada, this year we had 11 in Quebec and 60 that were come, that came from Canada. And then, so that was amazing because there was so much good talent that, that, that didn't participate last year that now think that the, it's worthwhile because not only that the four winners last year, they won $5,000, but this year the winners are going to win $10,000 plus the three months at the Nightmare Factory, you know, and then so, so I'm, I'm so excited, Cayman. 
it's incredible, man. Three months of the Nightmare Factory as well. That's uh, that's a big deal in itself as well. You know, there's a, that's a lot of training. That's a lot of a lot of well, bumps, a lot of bruises, a lot of. Uh, it's almost like a dream world for a wrestler because you know you have two guys from AEW, which are Billy Gunn and QT Marshall, who's really all over TV now. QT Marshall, totally. you see him all over in storylines and everything, and then you have from WWE Cody Rhodes. So, you know, what a better, you know, there was always two criteria that my father told me when I started in the business. To make it in this business, there's two things that got to happen. You got to be at the right place at the right time, and you got to know the right people. Absolutely. And I, think that, and I think that Wrestling Academy is bringing both of those things possible for the Canadian wrestlers. So, so, so I think it's amazing. And, and what was fun, too, uh, came in his last year, QT Marshall came on the, on the finals only. And in, in August, and he, and he chose the four winners on a giant screen from Atlanta, Georgia. He was in the United States, and he was on the giant screen and choosing the winners after every match. And and, and when we finished the contest last year, the next day I called QT at home in Atlanta, and I said, hey, QT, I want to thank you for this opportunity and everything. It was so wonderful this year, so much fun. And, 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 and before I had a chance to say anything, he told me, he says, are we doing this again next year? And then so I said, wow, you know, yeah. Yeah. I was so happy. And, and and then as we spoke in this winter, when I went to see the my four winners, I stopped at the Nightmare Factory going down south, you know, to Florida. And I stopped to see them for a week. And, and, and we spoke. And then I realized that QT is so involved in this project now that he even told me, he said, listen, Jock, he says, um, this year is going to be a little different. I said, oh, yeah? He says, yeah. He says, I want to choose the participants with you. And he oh, says, I also, he says, I also want to be on the giant screen for the quarterfinals, for the semifinals, and for the finals. Fantastic you know, instead, stuff. Of, instead of just the finals. And then about a couple of months ago, he came out with this nice little gift. He said to me, he says, why don't we upgrade a little bit the stakes here? And, and, and he says, when we eliminate all the people that we eliminate, we spoke about that, all the people that we eliminate during the, the competition this summer, he says, why don't I choose one of them? And I come to Montreal in the final night and I wrestle him. You know, oh. so I'll, I'll, I'll wrestle with a consolation prize. You that's, wrestle what, that's what hell of a consolation prize as well you know, for a budding wrestler, Marshall, you know. I can't believe it. You know, I, I, I and QT Marshall, it's his first time he'll be wrestling in Montreal. You know, so what an opportunity for the Canadian wrestlers for this competition. That's an incredible opportunity, man. It's an incredible opportunity. It's, it's great to see the success of it. I mean, spoke with you last year, and I could see then how excited, how passionate you were about it alone, you know? And uh, for everyone to get involved, jump on board, and for it to reach the levels it's reaching now as well, uh, and for everyone else to, to open their arms and embrace that, it's fantastic. I, I don't have a hat, but my glasses are off to you, my friend, all right? <laughs> it's amazing. I... Uh... I was at a Comic Con about a month and a half ago in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and uh, and I was with a bunch of guys like uh, Lex Luger, the Steiners, and Jimmy Hart, and the Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase, Virgil, and it goes on and on the list of the guys that were there. And everybody that I saw, they came up to me and they said, "Like ten thousand dollars? Like you know, <laughs> is, is, is this true what we're hearing? You know, in in, in the world of wrestling now or across the globe." They're talking about, you know, be, uh, independent wrestlers that have a chance to win $10,000. You know, they're, they're used money, to, you know, for, they're, a, for they're an upstart, you know. You know, they're used to making $150, $200 a night. Now they're, <laughs> they have a, they're plus the visibility. So, so, so it's fun for me to see all the major superstars. You know that 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 are following this competition and mm. saying, "Hey, Mark, you know it's wonderful what you're doing for the the, the young uh, kids in, in Canada and the female and male." And I even stopped. Uh, uh, I even stopped at the Hulk Hogan's hangout this winter. You know, I went to Claire. Yes. Waters. Uh, well, I wanted to talk to you about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, so tell me about that. Obviously, hang on. Let's take a little step back a sec as well. Obviously, last time we were on, we didn't didn't really talk about Hulk Hogan last time. Let's talk a little about the Hulkster if we can as well while we're on today. Can we do that? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So so tell me first of all, what is of obviously both icons, both wrestlers, amazing. What is your relationship with Hulk Hogan? And just just tell me about your your recent meeting and what have you as well. Well, first I gotta tell you, when you say two icons, don't even compare me in the same place as Hulk Hogan. <laughs> you know, Hulk Hogan is the creator, the builder of wrestling and in, in, of the globe, and he he's the one with Vince McMahon that really created. Uh, I can't 
I can't help but to think of WrestleMania three at the Pontiac Silverdome, 93,000 people there. And yeah. uh, my brother Raymond and I, we were against Beefcake and Valentine, you know, and, and, and but, but Hulk Hogan against Andre the Giant, you know, that was really the starting of something new in wrestling. And uh, so he's the creator of that. And, uh, but, but for me, I always had a great relationship with Hulk because uh, over the 10 years that I worked with him uh, on the road, like 25 days a month around the globe, like flying every day in airports, you know, 25 days a month and just going uh, from, from, from Hong Kong to, 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 to Miami, to New York, to, to, to London, to, to, and always have uh, been with Hulk, you know, day in, day out. He, he, he learned to respect a lot, my brother and I, because it, not only for our professionalism in the ring, but 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 mostly for our professionalism outside the ring, our, our dress code, our manners, our being nice to the fans all the time. You know, our, whether it's six o'clock in the morning, someone would come up for an autograph, would always smiling, and and you know, and, and and Hulk liked that image. He was the same way. He was always nice. So I so so he learned to respect a lot. My brother Raymond and I over the years, and uh, without going in any details, please, just the fact that also that. Uh, I had the incident with the British Bulldog, uh, Dynamite Kid, with the bullying situation, where 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 uh, where I awesome. stood up for, where I stood up for myself. I think Hulk took a big big respect in that, like you know, because he 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 it's been going on for two three years, and then no one was doing nothing about it. So when I did something about it, it's like. He he just had a lot of respect. Yeah, for yeah, 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 yeah. And then after that, he he went on to let me beat him in Montreal in a one-on-one -on -one match. You know, amazing, <laughs> that's, amazing. That's more than amazing. You know Shock. how many guys? How, how many was that guys for you? To... <laughs> Tell me now, with that big cheesy grin on your face, how was that for you? And was that the biggest favor anyone could do for someone in wrestling? <laughs> exactly. And you know what's funny is now I got this big grin and I'm laughing about it. I could see it. I, but but when I would when that happened, I wasn't grinning and all you know it was like i couldn't it was an unbelievable situation it was like how can a guy like me get hulk hogan when he's on the peak of nwo like you know the biggest almost the biggest time of his latest career yeah and have him let me pin him one two three in the middle of the ring without using a chair a gimmick or nothing just a clean pin you know i must have hypnotized him somehow or done something you know <laughs> But 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 now I laugh about it now because I, I know Bret Hart. I know a lot of guys. They wanted to beat Hulk. You know they wanted to wrestle Hulk, and Hulk always says no, no, no. He was very oh, few had the chance. And 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 out of this relationship, it's so funny because a few years down the, the road, you know, after I quit the WWF and all that, I went down to Florida, and then I went to his the Hogan shop there in Orlando when he opened his boutique up. I went to see him there, and it was so funny because. When I walked in there, it was the same charisma, the same magnetic connection we had. Because when he saw me come in, he says, oh, no, brother, I don't want you to come beat me again, brother. And, you know, and he was like saying that in front of all the fans. He, he was acknowledging my victory in Florida, like, you know, in front of his fans. And, and that, that touched me so much. And and then last year, then I was down in Florida again, and uh, and I heard about his karaoke place that was really wild and swinging, you know, I like you uh, sing a song. I watched your song, man, fantastic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so I so I went there, and I uh, I, I and and he knew I was coming. I I called Jimmy Hart, and I told him, I said, Jimmy, tell Hulk I'm coming now. And so when I got to the karaoke place, he put. He put some seats right in front of the stage, VIP, the whole big thing, like you know, and so, and and he was and he was with his girlfriend, his beautiful girlfriend that he has now. He was sitting right in the back where people sing, right beside the the, the his son who it's his son who manages the karaoke. Oh, right, so, yeah, Nick, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So so he Ooh. puts his the, the music on, and so it's a little group. We're all close together. And I was seeing everybody come to sing, and I was encouraging everybody, applauding everybody. And next thing you know, it was my turn to go up. But Hulk didn't know I was going to sing. So, oh, did he so not? Know? <laughs> no, I no. Him, when you started singing, he goes, whoa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so I started singing. I, 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 and it was amazing, the relationship that we have. It's like uh, I could honestly say that that. I used to be a groupie of Hulk Hogan, uh, but now I think we're friends. Yeah. Like, you know, I, I really think he got, I gave him a big kiss on the way out there, you know, and, uh, and it was like, I even put a picture on my Facebook, you know, I, I, yeah, I, you could see my, my lips uh, going right into his cheeks and I'm so, but I'm so proud that I've, that I have that man, you know, that you got to remember my, my biggest passion in life is wrestling. Absolutely. And the biggest icon of them all is that man. So, 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 and, and you know, I gotta, I gotta tell you the truth though. I, I came in a little prepared because 
when 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 I went to sing, I I I I, uh, I lived a little experience here. It's called the Mask Singer. Yeah, you, you yeah, know? yeah. That's, that's on the notes. Listen. So <laughs> when let's talk a bit. Let's go back in time a little, Jacques. The Mask Singer. Mm -hmm. So when did you know about that? When did you know that was happening? When we last spoke, did you know already? Did no, you avoid no, giving me the scoop? No, no, no I couldn't. I, and if and if I did, I couldn't talk about it. I know I get. Case was fame, a right? Complete case fame. Holy hundred percent. I get you it. Have no, you have no idea how it's done there. Like you know, from the time I left my home, there's a limousine that, that picks me up, and uh, I have black shoes, black tights, black coat, uh, black gloves. I got a black mask. They don't, they don't, I'm not allowed to speak from the minute I get into the limousine. They don't even want the driver of the limousine uh, to know who I am. And it's really a big secret thing, a secret yeah. deal. That's and, crazy. And, and, it's and it's like I the old kayfabe days coming back on another level, amazing. you know? <laughs> and then I had to go and it was, it was even worse than that. I had to go practice uh, because it was not only the fact of singing, there was the, I didn't want to. I didn't want to trip all over the the dancing girls, you know. And then, then the, there was a lot of practice to do, you know, choreography there to do, and then to to work out. And and with that mask, that 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 that's claustrophobic. It's like you have no idea, came in how that mask suffocates you. Heavy and as well, it looks heavy. It's heavy. That that I don't mind, but it's like you can't see in it. It's it's yeah. one of those things where it's like you got your your neck is back, and it's like you can you can barely see. And when you look in front. You could only see, let's say, starting about four or five feet from the ground high. You can't oh, see man. the like a little so, little tunnel. So, but you don't even see the floor when you're walking <laughs> when you come out. So it's you really feel lost in that costume. <laughs> yeah. But, but, the, but the funny thing was, is uh, I was very lucky because it was twenty contestants when it started, and I ended up all I, I lasted till there was eight. You know, oh, so I had eight you got to. I was going to ask, yeah. where did you get to so in the I competition? Did so, I, I, yeah. I did pretty good. I had four songs in there, you know, like yeah. I, I sang four songs. So when I got to the, the second song, it was easier. And the third and fourth song, I was having a blast. I was getting, <laughs> I, I was getting, almost putting the Mountie under the lobster. Yeah. Like, you know, I was cocky <laughs> and I was going out there and having fun. And I wasn't, uh, I wasn't claustrophobic anymore. I yeah, I was going to say, you got used to it as the weeks went on to do as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and it was so fun. And, and you know, another greatest, great, great, great thing about the Masked Singer is, is like they have these, uh, these judges. There's four judges there and they try to guess who you are. Like in a week after, I don't know if it's like that in Europe, but here in yeah, America, yeah, yeah, it's the same so they deal. Have yeah, to, they have to try to guess who you are with the so 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 after the first week, like this comedian, he 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 starts saying, "That's got to be Jacques Rougeau," you know, and he starts, and then he starts, but every week until they they unmask me, like you know, like months later, you know, like two months later. Every time he went on, on TV, he start like making me look so good. Like he'd yeah. say, that's Jacques Rougeau because he's the only guy who beat Hulk Hogan. He's the guy who was champion. He's the guy who and then he kept bragging about me every week. But but but, but it was amazing. And and then the other three would say, No, he's a hockey player. That's so and so. So I'd act like I was a hockey player yeah. with my hand, you know. I was yeah. always trying to throw him off, you know. But 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 what um uh, what visibility it was for me, you know, because another thing that happened too uh, that I didn't tell you about came in is last year, something really major happened to me too. I was very lucky. It was a good year. Um, there's this company called Videotron in, in, in Canada and Videotron is a big, big, it's like a Canal Plus in France or, yeah. or like, you know, it's a big, big station. It's a big newspaper. It's a big everything. The guy, this guy, Pierre Calpelladou, he owns almost uh, the country, you yeah. know? So, 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 so he, he, he has this, uh, this web, not this web video, it was like uh, internet, everything is all the TV, radio, everything. He owns anything. So, so yeah. he, he, so he had this commercial on TV I saw where, it. Did you really? <laughs> I did. I did. Yeah, so, yeah. So I, I go through the wall. <laughs> yeah, and... that's right. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I saw it. Yeah. So in like, the, in the, the family living... home and you end up through <laughs> the wall. Yeah. <laughs> Looked like a lot of fun, and... man. Actually, I'm, I, I, I'm in my office and then this guy who's putting the cable in my office, he says, well, Mr. Rougeau, your internet goes right through the wall. And I look at him and say, oh, yeah? And then I turn around and I go right through the wall <laughs> and, my, and my girlfriend and my kids <laughs> Or sitting That's in right. the living room, but it was so fun because what happened with that? Not only that it was fun, not a, not only that it was financial good for me, but it was. They were so kind that company to give back visibility to the Rougeau family. 
like you know to, to to bring us back in the limelight again like you know yeah. to just to keep them to keep the name alive you know uh, so so uh, long, long may it live you know long may it live and yeah. also that you know pro probably helped out a little bit with the mass singer then as well isn't it you know put you back <laughs> in the spotlight you know of course and of course and i'm sure it did because once they it, it, there was not one place came in that they didn't see me if you if you put if you look on your phone You'd be a commercial, you'd see me there. If you were on TV, you'd see me there. Yeah. If you were on bill billboards in Montreal, yeah. <laughs> you'd see me there. So, you know, I became so hot again that I'm sure that the mask singers, they probably thought saw that I was hot like that, you know, yeah. because, because in our business came and it's always been like that all my life. You know, when a wrestler or an entertainer or a singer, or it's when you're hot, you're hot. When you're not, you're not. You know, and, 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 it's, and it's like this. And, and then I was like this, peaking like crazy. Yeah, so, yeah, top of the roller coaster. So one good thing brings another, you know. And, and, and not only with that, because with all those good things that were happening to, with me and me putting it on Facebook, now I didn't know that you've seen it, but now yeah, that, that you're telling me. Always so, watching Jock. <laughs> so the whole world has seen me go through this good period <laughs> and that and that brought me many other things like comic cons like yes. stuff like that so so people are saying Jacques, Jacques is in shape Jacques is hot Jacques is you know so so all good things it's like they say when it when it rains it pours but when it's sunny it's really sunny you know? absolutely and, uh, Absolutely. So this, so this wrestling academy, like uh, coming back to that, it's so amazing that everything and the popularity and everything and the and all the people, you know, there's something I've learned with the years came in that you only learn when you get old, like me. You know, I'm I'm 63 <laughs> years old, now. but 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 you're only as important as your surroundings. Absolutely. You know, you know, when you're young, you think you're important because you're good. But then when you realize, when you get older, you realize you're only as good as your surrounding, you know, the people that are holding you up there and people that are helping you, like like you right now, like all the podcasts that I did, people that help you make you that you're your success. You know, it's not you the success. It's everybody that's around you. So, 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 man, it's, definitely. so it's all good. It's all good now. I'll drink to that, my friend. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Brilliant. Brilliant, brilliant. <laughs> so yeah, so yeah, I've also seen there's a there's a new little uh, little character in the family. There's a new member in the family. Um, I, I couldn't help but laugh. What's his name? Montana. Montana, yeah, Montana. And uh, what's he? Is he a parakeet? You know, no, he's my grandson. You're talking about my parakeet. Oh no, I was on birds first. I was. Good God. Good God. Good God. Yeah, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's good. Right. We'll come to the bird in a bit. Let's go to the grandson. Yeah, yeah, come on. Go to, oh, yeah. Go to... <laughs> first one. <laughs> well, at least at least came in. You see, I got my priorities at the right place. Yeah, absolutely, man. Absolutely. That was a <laughs> so test. I was right. Believe it or not, that was a test. Okay. Yeah. So, very funny. Yeah. Tell me very about funny. your grandson. How is he? When was he born? Everything cool? What's going on there? Well, he's about seven months old. Yeah. And, and, and eight months, seven, eight months old now. And it's amazing because, you know, I've heard all my life, came in. you know, you hear stories, you see movies of grandfathers, you know, uh, oh, he's a grandfather or this. And you always say, uh, you hear people say like, oh, it's fun when you're a grandfather, you take the kids. And when you're tired of them, you give them back to the parents and, you know. You know, you never know what a grandfather is until it happens. Yeah. And then when it happens, there's something magical that happens. Like, you know, when I saw my son, Emil, take my grandson, his son, in his hands and put his nose against his face and go, Gucci, 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 Gucci. And then it's like, you look at your son and you go like, wow, deja vu. Yeah. Like, you know, Wow. I did that to you, you brat. Like, you know, I, I did that to my son. And that's when you realize what a grandfather is. Yeah. It's like you're you're reliving everything, but from a camera on the outside. That's like, you know, you're being in the middle of it. Like, yeah. It's really because when you're having a kid, believe me, it's sleepless nights, it's changing diapers, it's a hard time. And it's, you know, if you've been there, you know what it is. Often but a when, thankless task, isn't it? But when it's you never, it's a job. It's an incredible time in your life that it passed so fast and it's so long because you know changing and working and all. That. But but when you have the time and you and you and you look at it from the outside, that's when you really appreciate the beauty. And, and, and Montana Rougeau, I got to tell you something. I'm sure I'm not the first grandfather who says that. What a, what a handsome guy he is! Like you know, he's just he's he's, he's funny. <laughs> 
he's a toddler. Like, you know, he's a, he's, he's laughing all the time. He's a happy baby. So, yeah. so, 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 so it's fun. So now that's uh, beautiful. Man. Well, congratulations <laughs> on him anyway. And in years to come, you can tell him the Cayman got him mixed up with a, a bird. <laughs> <laughs> he'll probably uh, shoot he'll probably shoot you a bird yeah <laughs> yeah uh, what a knob I turned out to be eh? <laughs> <laughs> but now oh, let's good. talk about uh, let's talk about Pixel yeah Pixel. Pixel there we are there we are Pixel Pixel Montana yeah there we are Pixel yeah. how is Pixel when did he come along uh, I've been watching videos I'm sure I saw a video of him. Was he in the pool or on the lazy river or something? <laughs> He's living the life of a prince, you know. Yeah. And, and, and 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 the funniest thing is the last few years that we've had him. We've had him for quite a few years now. But the last uh, a few years that we go down south or we yeah. travel, he we'd always leave him with uh, Natalie's daughter, you know, like yeah. my, my, my my. And 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 this year we decided to take him with us for the first time. <laughs> And then we took him down to Orlando. It's not a, it went to Walt Disney. But anyway, I'll listen to say that. But it was like, a, what a trip. Like, you know, but now it's it's bad because, you know, when you become a grandfather and then, you know, you're alone, you know, me and my girlfriend, he's almost becoming like our our, our baby. You know, yeah, I, I, last one you know seeing, right? I'm seeing this. This big ass kick inside of you one moment. Right. And then I've seen oh, the, the grandchildren the bird and everything. It's like, look at this. This man has feelings. This man has a soul. The Mariawis Mari get this bird. But let me <laughs> tell you something. And it reminds me of a video I did many years ago in London, actually with Jimmy Hart, where I had my electric shock stick. And I was uh, I was in the parliament where they have the, the all the, 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 the guys that have their cost statues and they can't move there. The ones that can't move there, the, 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 uh, the officers that you I can't. Know you. Get... Yeah, like the Welsh and the Scottish guards, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I remember yeah, there was a Scots. bunch of birds. There was a bunch of birds on the floor, and I used to run after them with my 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 shot stick. <laughs> pigeons, <laughs> was that pigeons? Yeah, exactly. And uh, but it's so funny because Pixel, I take him, <laughs> and uh, we got the the weather was so warm over there, like 85, 90 degrees. So we had this little bag where I put him in front of me, and I take him on my motorcycle, you know, with me. So we take him to the beach. We take him everywhere with us. We. We go to restaurants. We take him to restaurants in his little cage. There, we bring him with us, and uh, so so life life is good for him too, I guess. Ah, uh, man, excellent <laughs> stuff. Excellent, that's fantastic. But uh, yeah, and you you could, you could tell him I got him confused with the baby as well in time if he understands, you know. But uh, hey, I'm just so happy. Day. I'm so happy that I didn't. <laughs> yeah, my, yeah. That, that, my, my son sees the podcast. He, <laughs> that could be, be another story. No, I'm, I'm sorry, guys. Group. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sure, I got some fun questions as well. I put out there if it's all right. I'll ask a few of those. Yeah, it's always fun. Wrap it up. Um, mm -hmm. So we've got this a bit of weird, a bit of wonderful. Warren Lewis, first of all, he's a fellow wrestler himself now as well, but a massive fan, particularly of the fabulous Russo brothers, his favorite tag team of all time. Uh, his question, however, are you still in touch with Carl Pierre Olet? Well, okay. First of all, let me deconfuse him. It's uh, the 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 the. the 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 uh, actually the fabulous Rougeau brothers was with my brother Raymond the yes, Quebec yes, yes. no no the no Quebec that's right was with Carl no no yes. the, the question is correct but uh, the Rougeau okay, is his okay. favorite tag team but he's asked okay. off that I've I've sort of put I, it in I, my I, own I interpretation him, I speak to him briefly I speak to him briefly here and there but not very much we kind of took different parts his uh. I don't see him very much since he has this new gimmick, the Frankenstein gimmick. There, yes, that he, yes, yes. So, so, so he's he, not he, human. <laughs> he's not in his own world. He's in a different world. <laughs> but, but, but but when I cross him, and when I see him at comic cons and stuff, we take we do comic cons together. We say hello, and we. But but our friendship has has kind of faded away with the years yeah, because of yeah. that. It, that happens, doesn't it? You know, as because well, you of know? a lot of times it happens, and it happened for a long time with my brother before we reconciliated. It was yeah. a lot of times it's because of Vince, the big boss there, and the and the pressure of uh, if you, if you talk to this guy, well, you won't have a chance to do business with this guy, <laughs> and, and and so a lot of people put their business in front of their friendship, and then so. But I respect that because you know uh, my life is soon to be over with, and then then he's got still some time to do so so uh sometimes people just put a fence or a, or a wall to avoid having any heat with anybody you know or something yeah yeah so, <laughs> but but when i cross paths with with carla we always say hello shake hands and then uh, yeah 
for sure. Awesome stuff, man. Awesome. I've got Jaden Barry here. He asks, what in wrestling was the best piece of advice that you were ever given? Putting you on the spot now. That I was given? I think it's Ric Flair that gave it to... I don't know if we spoke about this game in before, but uh, Ric Flair gave me the best piece of advice. When, uh, when, when, when you go into the ring, uh, always try to give the best to your opponent. Always try to make him shine the most you can. Mm. Even if you're not going over, even if you're getting beat, try to make him shine the most because eventually, eventually, the guys that work with you and that you'll meet again down the road, they will always remember when you got into the ring with them that you were very generous to them. You always tried to make them look their best. And, 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 and you know what? The elevator always goes up, but it always comes back down. Absolutely. And, 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 you know, and, and my father always told me that's my best advice that my father ever gave me is, you know, I was young and I was cocky and when I was young and I was going on my way, I think I was the best and I was going there. And my father always told me, he says, listen, he says, you better be nice to everybody on the way up. Because one day you're going to meet them all the way again. Uh, you're going to meet them back when you go down. <laughs> That's it. Exactly, and, and, man. And if, and if you were nice to them on the way up, they're going to stop your fall. They're going to help you stop your fall. Yeah. But if you're on your way down and you weren't nice to them, they're going to just step aside you, and look at step you. Step aside you know, and let you land on whatever's beneath you. Yeah. yeah exactly. Sound piece of advice, that, man. That's a sound piece of advice. Um, one more, um, a little uh, lighthearted question from Spencer Magari. Uh, he asks, is it true? That all you listen to is Barry Manilow. I don't like heavy metal. I don't like rock and roll. All I like to listen to, listen to, to is Barry, Barry Manilow. Manilow. Hey, we're all American, all American, <laughs> all American boys. Yeah, we're all truth. American boys. Brilliant, man. Brilliant. The truth is, I like Elton John also. <laughs> ah, good man, good man. Oh, excellent stuff. Um, Chuck, that's great, mate. You've been a fantastic sport as always. Even when I'm getting family members confused with feathered birds. <laughs> you know, it's, it's it's so much fun to have a, to do a podcast with you, Cayman. You bring out my smile so much, and you bring out some positive energy. And I, I thank you so much. I bring out the worst in everyone, Jacques. I bring out the Not worst in, in everyone. Not in me. You bring out my best, Gaiman. You bring hey, out my fist best. Fist bump, my brother. Hey, and next time you're in Cardiff, we've got to catch up, mate. All right? So if and when you do land in the UK again, if I don't know if there's anything planned, if they do another clash at the castle or whatever, if there's uh, things going on, I'll make an effort to come and see you. And if you need transport from the airport, I'm your brother. Thank you so much and appreciate it. And uh, listen, uh, hi to all my fans uh, in, in Europe, everywhere. And uh, it was, I always had a great time there. And uh, I still am in contact with a lot of guys. I want to say hi, by the way, to Kellett, you know, who, who does all the uh, Comic Cons and stuff there. Or yes, yes, he was course. the last guy who brought me in there. What was awesome. his name? What was his name, Kellett? Uh, Tell it, tell it, tell it, tell it. You're putting me on the spot now. <laughs> really? Anyway, he'll know. He'll know. He's the one who brought me in for the last Comic Con that I was there, and and I had a great, great time to meeting the fans and stuff. So, so uh, I salute him. And uh, so, take care, uh, Cayman. And uh, next year, just don't forget one thing. The most important thing is a Wrestling Academy. You can go on my website, wrestling-academy.ca, and then you can follow this contest of $10,000, the winners, the three months at the Nightmare Factory. And one of the reasons why I want you guys to follow this competition is one day, one given day, one of my winners of Wrestling Academy will be a superstar in the big leagues, and you'll be able to say that, hey, I saw him first at Jacques Rougeau's Wrestling Academy when he first got his break. That's awesome. Hey, long may the success of it continue, my friend. Uh, I wish you all the very best. It's going from strength to strength anyway, by the look of things. And uh, yeah, long may it continue, Jacques. Jacques Rougeau, ladies and gentlemen, on the Cayman Show. Handsome, brave, strong, legend. Woohoo! Thanks again, my brother.